What's up everyone, welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to talk about some Venom mail that I got. Obviously you can see the figures back here. I didn't get all four of them, I mean all six of them, I only got four of them. Uh, Typhoid Mary and Scream somehow are like, you know, got caught in shipping or something, so I should probably get those in the next few days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save them till I get the other two in, uh, which like I said hopefully should be any day now, and I will do videos next week, and I'll probably drop one episode a, you know, a day starting next week. Week. Uh, and we'll do you know just each toy individually and after we get through all six of them we'll take the build a figure parts that come with each one and build monster venom and make the seventh video so next week we'll mostly be dedicated to toys I might do one or two other videos on top of those but it'll probably mostly focus on those uh, just to give me myself a little bit of a break on talking so much because in some of those videos I might not say a lot and just kind of do some cool shots of the toys show you what they do and uh, and try to keep speaking to a minimum uh, so that's gonna be coming up on the channel uh, so that was part of my Venom mail today. So yeah, I've got here, I'll show you, I got Carnage, uh, who looks awesome, and he comes with the Build-A-Figure Venom head. He has a Cletus Cassidy head, and then he also has uh, the Carnage head. And of course, there's some kind of smudge or something paint scraped off on his nose. And, uh, you know, and normally I'm not so nitpicky about that stuff, but at the same time, it's like, oh man, right on the nose, man, for real. Um, and then I also got Poison Peter Parker. Uh, from the Venomverse storyline, Ibon Coella, who we're going to talk about coming up soon, uh, created the visual look of this character, and I think it looks like an awesome toy. Uh, the, the tendrils coming off it, I think you can bend them and fold them, so that'll be fun to mess with. Um, then I also have here uh, Venom, obviously. Uh, Eddie Brock's head on there, and he comes with the monster Venom leg, and you got the spare head as well. So we got that, and then good old Spider-Ham. Uh, Spider-Ham came in, he's got the pork rind head, and this actually goes on the, the Venom figure if you want it to. Uh, so yeah, this is like when the Venom suit takes over, you know, you know, a Spider-Ham or on Eddie Brock or something, and yeah, I don't know if I've ever read that story, but yeah, pork rind. I'm not a big Spider-Ham fan, I'll be honest. This is the one figure in the set I really didn't care about, but he did come out pretty neat looking. I mean, he's very accurate to, to the character, and he comes with the chest piece, and then someone informed me that this is a back piece, so this goes onto the back of that uh, to you know fully make the, the you know the full torso. So I got those four, and like I said, we'll wait until we get uh, Typhoid Mary, and uh, we'll wait till we get Scream before we do the videos on them. But we should get those any day now. So I'm you know I'm hopeful we'll get them any day now, and we'll get those videos up to you guys as soon as possible. Uh, but then I also got in the mail my copy of Venom number four, which came in through my Marvel subscription. And again, I'll put a link down below if you want to subscribe to a Marvel comic yourself, and if you want to get Venom delivered right to your door, because I know when I did my review of this, I am kind of 50-50. There are things in this that kind of like irk me, but then there are things in this that like I got to give Donny Cates some credit for. But the thing that irks me the most is where it's like inside here, and I didn't bring this up in my review. I think I cut it out. I did say it, but I think I cut it out. Um, I'll have to go back and watch, but yeah, I think I cut this part out. But you'll see these rats here, these creatures which are from the Dark Origin comic book. This is something that happened in Dark Origin, and it's like, oh, so Donny Cates has read Dark Origin, but yet in issue two, he mentions that Eddie Brock's an only child, which retcons Eddie Brock's sister, who was a big part of Dark Origin, you know, because she was only mentioned in like a Nova comic and something else before, but she got the most page count and showed that she was part of the torment that Eddie Brock had as a child uh, because she always like blamed him for their mother dying and stuff like that and I'm like wow that's good drama that's that's good that's something good to build off of Donny Cates but then for some reason they label Eddie Brock as an only child and so I'm like okay so you're, you're saying this rat creature is more important than Eddie Brock's sister so you're you're adamant about putting this in your book, but you're gonna retcon like a whole human being that could add something to Eddie Brock's story. But this little creature that you know adds very little uh, just shows that hey, I read a book once. It's like okay, cool, you read a book once, but did you read the whole thing or did you stop on page one? Uh, so. Anyway, so that's just little things like that kind of irk me. Uh, and then when I wrote him about it on Twitter, now that I'm on Twitter, of course I didn't get an answer. So it's like, all right. And I was not trying to be confrontational. I'm just curious to know his thought process when it comes to what he decides to retcon and what he decides to build off of. Because I don't mind this, the new stuff he's bringing in. I just don't want to lose the old stuff at the same time. Uh, and I don't really care if he you know, retcons all the Bendis stuff because I didn't read like Space Knight Venom and I didn't read Guardians of the Galaxy Venom. I do have the trade, so we can cover them on the show, but I've never read them. So I don't care if he retcons that stuff. I'm not, you know, I'm not attached to that stuff. I'm attached to the stuff 
from the 90s and to or, you know early 2000s and stuff so hopefully the book gets better but either way i want to share this with you if one of you have not read this boom there's the digital code right there if you go to the website down below um, and i'll post it up here as well and uh, put that code in the first person to get it and put that code in gets the comic book for free digitally uh, so that's something we do from time to time on the show i haven't done it in a while and i apologize i didn't do it in my review so finally there's the code uh, so first person to put that in gets the code and gets the comic so enjoy that very much and uh, let me know what you think if you got the comic and you read it yourself let me know what you think in the comments below uh, and then also we got some other stuff I want to talk about today. We got Venom, you know, mail taken care of. Now let's talk about some Venom news and some upcoming toys and comic books that are coming from Marvel. Let's get the toys out of the way first because I really don't have much to say about them. These are just some images that I found. I think the first image uh, I found on Bloody Disgusting website. I don't know who took it, so I apologize if anyone knows who the original person who took this photo is. Let me know. But this is for a Mafex Venom toy, and it's based off the Todd McFarlane 1988 first appearance of Venom. Uh, and I think it looks really great. It's got a lot of detail. It's, it looks like a really cool toy. So that will be coming out, I believe, this fall, like around the time of the movie, maybe right after. And uh, and I have, you know, here's the image here. So definitely check that out. Let me know what you think of that. Uh, but then there's also for you fans out there who like Funko Pops. You know, obviously there's the Funko Pop toys coming out, and there's like Venom versions of like the Hulk and Iron Man. Um, and Captain America and, and there's like Walmart exclusive Ghost Rider um, and other characters as well so I'll have that image up here as well I'm not a big Funko Pop fan I really not into those so I'm probably not going to buy any of those uh, but you know I want to bring it to you guys in case any of you out there uh, are fans of Funko Pops and you want to collect these those will be coming out very soon as well and then also Amazon is doing their Marvel collectors box where it's like a loot box essentially a loot crate and you open it up and get a bunch of random stuff in it uh, I probably won't get this either because it's sponsored by Funko and so that means there's going to be a Funko in it and that'll be the main item in there the main collector's item and I'm sure it'll be cool looking maybe it'll even be a big size you know Venom or something uh, but just for money and you know stuff like that I just don't have it so I'm probably not going to get this but in case you guys are interested definitely check out Amazon.com and look up the Venom collector's box and those will be available I think in September they'll be shipping out so you got to put in your order uh, soon so make sure you do that if you are a Venom fan and you're a collector of Funko and loot uh, crates and boxes and stuff like that uh, definitely go pick that up so um with that out of the way and then obviously you guys know the lego venom is coming out i'm a big lego fan i made a whole video on that so we won't do, you know put a put picture up or anything here you can go watch that video if you want to see it but that'll come out december 1st uh, for those of you who are curious um, and then now let's check out some comics coming out in october that have venom in them from uh, marvel comics so we have uh, first we have the venom annual which we made kind of an episode on um and it'll at this here we get a little bit more information. Um, it's the Venom Annual. Donny Cates is going to be part of it. Jeff Loveness, uh, David Michelini, uh, and more to come. They're going to announce more people. Ron Lim. I'm hoping Ron Lim teams up with David Michelini. I think that's what's going to happen. So I can't wait to see what short story they tell because their short story in Venom 150 I liked a lot. Um, and it says here, for the first time in Marvel history, the wicked web slinger called Venom gets his very own annual. This one features a few walks down memory lane from some of the best creators in comics today, and even a few surprise guests from Venom's past. Serving as a great jumping on point for readers new and old, this is one issue of Venom you can't afford to miss. Uh, and it is a $5 issue, but it'll have 40 pages of story in it. And uh, just for the price, I'll pay it just for David Michelini and Ron Lim easily even if they only do like a five to eight page story i don't care it'll be worth it for that for me um, but it'll be great because maybe you know with david on there and donny cates and the editors like maybe they can all kind of brainstorm some ideas and probably are already are to get the book out on time probably already have done this and maybe they can clean up some of this continuity or make it a little bit more streamlined so that way people like me have less fanboy -y questions about it you know that's really what i want i don't want to fanboy out and, and like crap all over this run i want to like this run but i just i get hesitant with some of the stuff that's happening so um so yeah i'm, I'm excited for this annual and then also venom number seven comes out which is by donny cates again but Ivan coella who i mentioned who designed the poison character uh he was the artist on venomverse and uh, and venomized and i love his art i'm very very happy to see him come in i think it's a one-shot storyline or it's like a precursor to a storyline i think it's called the abyss and it says, just when you thought the blockbuster story of the summer couldn't get any more intense, Donny Cates and special guest artist and Venom veteran Ivan Coelho uh, turned the story on its head again. But face front true believers, because it won't be dragons and god hosts and breakneck actions this time, 
No, 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 this time Donnie and Yvonne are putting Eddie Brock through an emotional meat grinder, the likes of which haven't been seen in the Marvel Universe ever before. So, knowing that they're going to take a break from the God stuff and the big thing and they're going to tell like a personal story, I'll wait and see exactly what it's going to be. I think Yvonne's an interesting artist to do an emotional story with. He kind of has like this fun, uh, like, you know, action style to it. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how he handles this more emotional stuff. Not that there wasn't some emotional moments in Venomverse and Venomize, because they had like those moments where they would see their loved ones when the poisons would you know show them their loved ones, and he had some you know emotional reactions there, and he did good you know face facial work with people sad or upset or angry. So I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm just it's an interesting story to tell with his art, but I'm. At the end of the day, so glad he's going to be coming on to draw Venom again because I love his stuff. And I was kind of wondering where he was going to go after the Cullen Bunn stuff that he did. So it's nice to see that he's coming back to work on Venom and give Don, uh, uh, Ryan Stegman some time to catch up and, and do some other issues uh, and get some in the can before they bring him back in. So this is great for me. I'm very excited for this. And then last but not least, we have the Venomnibus Volume 2, which I wasn't even sure they were going to do this, but I'm so glad they are. So this will basically collect all of the last stuff from the 90s. So we know the Ven Omnibus Volume 1 came out and that's pretty much Lethal Protector all the way to, I think maybe, not along came a spider, but it was maybe the Madness or Evil Within or something like that. And then it had like the Daredevil issue and the Iron Man issue and the Nova issue and Silver Sable issues and all that stuff like crammed in there. And then for the you know earlier Venom stuff the, that took place in Amazing Spider-Man, they did the Spider-Man versus Venom Omnibus. And so now we have the final one in the trilogy, I guess, which is called the Venomnibus Volume 2. And this will have, um, you know, this will complete your 90s solo series of Venom, it says. And it will collect uh, Venom Sinner Takes All, which we've talked about on the show already. Uh, Along Came a Spider, which we haven't. We will get to that. We're uh, closer to when the movies come out. We're going to, like, take a break from... Like, we're not going to go into Flash, Thompson, Venom. We're going to take a step back and do Venom, The Lost Years, or Eddie Brock, The Lost Years. And we're going to talk about these stories because they're going to come out in print again. And so we'll talk about uh, Along Came a Spider, The Hunted, The Hunger, Tooth and Claw, where Venom fights Wolverine for the first time. Uh, also Venom on Trial, Venom License to Kill, the Venom Agenda, and the Venom Finale. And there will also be an Uncanny Origins issue that's going to be included in here. Uh, there's And then also uh, the Planet of the Symbiotes is going to be recollected in this. And the Spider-Man Holiday Special <laughs> for, where Venom shows up during Christmas or something. I remember that comic. Uh, but all of this is going to be collected in one giant omnibus for $125. So there you go if you collect omnibuses. And you have the Spider-Man vs. Venom Omnibus that came out earlier this year. And then you have the Venomnibus Volume 1. Now you can get Venomnibus Volume 2 and complete that collection. And then don't forget also the Carnage Omnibus is out there as well. And that features a lot of the first uh, runs and appearances and miniseries of Carnage as well. Uh, so that's a lot, a lot of reading in four graphic novels or four omnibuses for sure. So if you're out there and you collect these, you know, make sure you add this to your list. This will come out, I think, later this year. Um, so it's on the schedule for now. I know it says October, but sometimes these things say October and then actually get released in November or December. So just keep an eye on it for when it gets a final release and I'll try to update you when I know for sure when it's coming out. Uh, so there you go. You know, we did some mail. We looked at some upcoming Venom stuff, toys, comics, a lot of things on the horizon. Obviously, everyone's getting excited for the movie, including Marvel, who's trying to, you know, capitalize on that. And, uh, you know, and this is this is great. You know, the more they reprint of all this stuff, the better it is, because then they also might release them digitally on Comixology. So these like little issues that I'm missing. Uh, I can maybe, you know, download, you know, and, and buy them like for $2 a piece. And that way I can, you know, review them for you guys. Because some of these issues have been hard to find in print for me. Um, so, and, and I don't go to enough conventions to, you know, pick them all up. But I'm, I'm doing my best. I got, recently I got the Iron Man issue that Venom showed up in and the Daredevil one. So I'm going to do some flashback stuff. And we're also going to do a minus one episode. Um, if anyone's a fan of the 90s comics and Marvel, they did a series called Flashback. And they did a minus one. So everyone who currently had a comic book going on in the 90s, they went and titled the issue number negative one. And uh, they would tell like an origin story in a way. And so I have one for Venom. 
called The Seed of Darkness. And uh, we are going to do an episode called Minus One, and we're going to go back in time, and we're going to read about this adventure of just Eddie Brock before the symbiote. So, uh, yeah, that'll be fun. And I haven't read that book in years, so it'll be really neat to see exactly what story they tell in there. Because I know it involves some kind of monster, uh, but it'll be really interesting to see, you know, Eddie Brock in his journalist days for one single issue, you know, trying to capture a story that involves a monster and him getting caught up in that kind of thing. So we'll have a lot of fun with it. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. Thank you so much. Let me know what you think of all this down below. Are you excited for the toys? We'll definitely get those to net, you know, we'll get to them next week for sure. And uh, let me know what you think of all this stuff, the comics coming out and the free comic. If you got it, if you want it, make sure you read it and let me know what your thoughts are down below. So I know that you got it. And I know that it found a good home. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.